Hey guys, what's going on? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication, and I recently started a new project that I'm calling Project Stealth. The goal behind this project, achieve great sound and great bass while maintaining usability of the trunk. In this video, I'm continuing the installation process with mounting of the amplifiers and the processor, and then wiring everything together with the power distribution. Now, how do we wire a complex car audio system like this? Why do I have two fuse blocks? How how can I make multiple conductor wiring bundles and what can I use in order to label and make these wires different colors? All that and more is coming on up my friends, let's get on into this. Before I get started with the wiring process, one of the first things I needed to do was make these small blocks that I'll be using to space up the digital signal processor. I want the DSP to be at the same height as the amplifiers and in order to actually secure the DSP to these blocks, I'm adding these threaded inserts. A link to these threaded inserts and all the other tools and materials that I use in all of my videos is always available down in the video description. I use threaded inserts that way I can take the fasteners in and out multiple different times to service the equipment if need be. I need to permanently mount these blocks that I've made to my original amp rack that I made in a previous video so here what I'm doing is I'm marking out my center locations and measuring exactly where these blocks will need to be. To attach these blocks to the amplifier rack, I'm using some of Mobile Solutions CA glue. This adhesive is incredibly strong, but just to be sure, I'm going to remove the DSP and I'll flip the whole amplifier rack assembly over, and I'm also going to add some mechanical fasteners from the back side. Back on the top side again of the amplifier rack, I'm once again using these threaded inserts for all of the amplifier mounting locations. With the amps and processor completely mounted, our setup looks a little bit like this, and because of those added steps, everything is now at the exact same level. Now I can actually start the wiring process, and I want to wire as much as possible before I put these amplifiers and processor back into the vehicle. Here I am connecting the remote turn-on leads. Now the DM810 digital signal processor actually has a remote out that will tell the amplifiers to turn on, so I'm connecting that remote out to each of the amplifiers. In the meantime, I will also connect the RCA line level outputs. Now I have six going from the DM810 over to the LC-6.1200 because it's a six channel amp, and I have two of them going over to the Epicenter 1200 subwoofer amplifier. This is about all I can do now, so I'll take this full assembly over to the vehicle and add it in. Here in the vehicle, I need to start connecting the power distribution wiring. This system is going to include a secondary battery that I need to wire up. Now, if you guys missed where I made the mounting location for this battery or any of the other videos that are part of this build, I have them in a video playlist up in the corner of the screen. The wire that I'm currently messing around with comes from the front of the vehicle and I need to add a ferrule and then I'm going to secure it into the fuse holder here. On the other end of the fuse holder, I'm mounting this wire that goes to the secondary battery. Now I've intentionally not mounted down the fuse holder yet because I wanted to get a feel for how the wiring was going to run within the vehicle, but now that I know, I can secure that down to this board as well. Hertz is here to give his seal of approval, so now we can move on to connecting all of these power wires. For each of these wires, I'm going to start with getting an idea for how long the wire needs to be, and then I cut it. Because I'm using the same wire for both positive and negative wires, I'm using this product called TechFlex in order to identify each of the wires. To use the TechFlex, I start with applying it over one of my cut to length wires. Once I know how long I need to cut the TechFlex, I cut it using a heat knife. Now I'm using a specialized heat knife here, but you could also take a razor blade and heat it up with something like a torch or a lighter and then cut through, but you definitely want to use something hot so that it keeps the ends of the TechFlex from fraying. Next, I'm going to apply a wire ferrule to the end of the wire, then apply heat shrink, and then heat shrink it down. Now if you're wondering why I'm using wiring ferrules, you can check out a previous video that I made, link to that along with all the other videos that I'm mentioning in this video up in the corner of the screen. Once my positive power wire is done, it looks a little bit something like this, and it's ready to go back into the vehicle. And for a quick side note, for the negative ground wires, I'll just be using a solid black TechFlex. Connecting these wires is pretty self-explanatory. I have one positive and one ground wire for each of the amplifiers that I'm connecting here to the fuse distribution center, and then obviously on the other end, I connect the amplifier. Next up, I need to get this smaller fuse panel mounted and ready for wiring, but before I do that, I want to thank monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. Audio Control is the company behind the DM810 digital signal processor that I'm using in this build. This DSP is extremely user-friendly and makes it so that we can control time 
time alignment, equalization, and crossovers for each of our speakers. This gives us the ability to fully tune our sound system to truly make it sound amazing. Now, one of my favorite features of the DM810 is that I can see what the incoming electrical signal is doing, and this allows me to easily verify that I have a full range signal to use and to flatten that input signal without having expensive testing equipment. For more information about the DM810, check out the links down in the video description. I can now get back to mounting this secondary fuse panel and then I'm going to connect both a positive and ground wire to that panel. That secondary fuse panel actually has two different banks of positive leads. One will be a constant positive lead and the other bank will be for switched positive. In the meantime here, I'm using some zip ties in order to make everything nice and organized. I'm in need of a switched power lead, a constant power lead, and a ground wire in order to connect the power requirements for the DM810. Here I'm making a quick little bundle of wires using the Mobile Solutions wire spinner. With this bundle of wires, I connect one end to the DSP and the other end to my secondary fuse panel. Back on the main fuse panel, I install a fuse for each of the amplifiers and for the secondary fuse panel. I secure my ground wire to the fuse panel and to the body of the vehicle. Next, I install the fuse for the smaller items, which so far is just the DSP, and I add the cover plate. Now the majority of the wiring is complete. I still need to run a few new RCA wires to feed signal to the DSP along with make connections for the speaker wires, but I'll probably run these off camera, so for now the wiring is a little bit messy before I can tidy everything up in its final location. But I'll be sure to get you guys a shot of all the wires all cleaned up in an upcoming video. Now would you like to know what's going on between the videos and get some additional tips and techniques? If so, I would encourage you guys to check me out on Instagram my account is at car audio fab. I'm currently at about 59.7 thousand. I'd like to get to 60,000. If you guys could help me out with that, I'd really appreciate it. Once again, a special thanks to Audio Control for the DM810 digital signal processor. You guys can find out more information about that down in the video description. As always, a special thanks to John, Brian, John, Ali, Nick, Bo, Wheels, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for joining and helping with the making of these videos. If you wanna find out more details to that, you can check that out down below as well. Other videos here on screen. As always, my friends, thank you for watching.